Well, hello everybody, uh, Sam and Matt. Today, we are here on the beautiful Ca Cana Durego Lake. Um, we're gonna be doing a ton of sampling today, water qualities, invertebrates, plankton, plants, all the good stuff. I'm gonna be showing you how to do that today. So, first off, we're gonna have Matt here. He's gonna grab a sample jar and he's gonna take a, <laughs> a sample of our surface water. Um, so he's just gonna put the jar right over the side of the boat get it all nice and filled to the top and we're gonna put that aside until later we won't be doing any of this um, lab work until everyone's back on campus um, here Matt has a camera bottle this takes samples um, at the bottom you send it down you open it up and it will close so Matt's gonna show you how to do that there's a spout on the bottom here that opens when you have water in it and you can close it when you're going to the bottom of the lake so it clicks open you have to pull both sides like that yep so then make sure that it's not going to close and matt's going to send it down you have a piece in his hand called the messenger he's going to hold on to that while he sends the camera bottle down to the bottom um, we're going to try to get a nice little view of this so is it going to send it straight down we're about 39 feet here um, there are tick marks on the rope that he's going to be looking at to make sure that we don't hit the bottom um, when you hit the bottom of a camera bottle a bunch of sediment gets stirred up that can really throw off your water quality readings um, so let him do that here So Matt has got this all the way down to the bottom now. Like I said, we're about 39 feet. Cana Drago has, I think, a max depth of about 40 feet. So we're right about here. Um, so he'll take that messenger and hold it straight up and down on this, on this rope right here. And he's gonna send that messenger perfectly down right to the bottom and it's actually gonna close our camera bottle, which we won't be able to see. But it goes all the way down to the bottom and then he'll pull it up. He feels kind of when it closes the bottle and then uh, we'll bring it up and see what happens. All right, so Matt's almost to the camera bottle. He's gonna take it. And it's full of our bottom water. Look at that, nice and clear. Um, so we're gonna get that right into our sample jar. I'll help Matt open that if he needs it. <laughs> you hold on to the little gray piece on the top and then you open up the spout. You're actually gonna let a little bit out before you put it into the jar and then you're gonna put it right into the jar and there we are. So this holds about a liter of water and our jars hold about a liter of water. But then again, we let a little bit out just in case we came close to the bottom. It's gonna have a lot of sediment in that first little spout that we let go back into the water. Sulfury. Smells a little sulfury. Oh boy, so that's something to note right there. So Matt will fill this jar all the way up and then we'll be good and cap it off. All right, so here we are for our next part of our limnological monitoring. Matt here has a Secchi disc. Um, it's a black and white disc that we use to check your water transparency. Um, we'll put it off the shaded side of the boat over here in a minute to show you how to do it. And we have increments on the rope here that are in feet. Um, so what you do for Secchi depth or your Secchi disc reading is again, lower it on the shaded side of the boat. You're gonna drop it down until you can't see it anymore. You're gonna mark that or you're gonna note that from your um, markings on your rope and then you're gonna bring it up to where you see it again and then you'll average those two numbers and I'll kind of explain that when we come over here to do it. So Matt's gonna lower this down. You guys might not be able to see it as well as we can but you just drop it down. Uh, one foot, two, three, four, you still see it. Five, six, seven, I can still see it kinda, and eight, can't really see it anymore. Okay, so our first number will be eight, and then Matt's gonna bring it up to where we can see it again, which seven. is seven. Yep. So you're actually gonna just take those two numbers and average them. And our second depth will probably be about 7.5 feet in Cana Durego Lake. So super easy. Um, again, I'm sorry if you guys can't see it as well, but um, this is what we use to test water clarity. All right, so our next part here is going to be using our YSI water quality instrument here, Yellow Springs instrument. Um, it's used to 
monitor, temperature, DO, salinity, conductivity, pH, TDS. Not sure if I had mentioned that yet. Um, so we're going to go from the surface to the bottom with this. I'm thinking every foot, maybe every two feet, depending on what we see. We're going to go check out, see if there's a thermocline, if it's still mixing. Um, so Matt's going to show you some parts of this. So here we have the sonde, which is what kind of tells you what's going on in the water. It sends all the information through the cable to the handheld. Um, there is a cover on it. You do need to make sure that all the probes say moist um, throughout the year or when we're using it. So this is a cover, what we're gonna use to put in the water. Matt's gonna throw that on right there. So that's all good to go. Um, this is our unit right here. It turns on with this little green button takes about a minute or two to power up and then as you can see there are these blue markings on the uh, cable here and these are in feet um, these are gonna help us as we're going down because unfortunately this handheld does not give us our depth um, so we have to get it on our own and again we know we're about 39 feet here so we'll send this down um, Usually this is a, a two-person job, which it, it probably will be here in a minute. Um, Matt's going to let that all regulate for a second, and I'm going to see if I can show you the screen. It might be a little tough um, out in the sun here, but on the top we have temperature. The second one is the barometric pressure. Um, don't have to worry about that too much for anything. Dissolved oxygen, conductivity, total dissolved solids, salinity, and pH. And that's what we get from here. So we let it all kind of level out, and then uh, we'll take a notebook and go from the top and bottom. All right, so for our next monitoring perimeter, we are going to look at plankton. So this is a Wisconsin plankton net that Matt's holding here. Um, there are a few different parts. Um, we have the plankton net, which is right on the top, all through there, um, a specific micron net, so some plankton can pass through and some cannot. Um, on the bottom here, we have our plankton cup where all the plankton gets collected. And then we have a spout on the bottom that's used um, with a clip to hold the plankton and then we'll put it in a jar and uh, show you guys how to preserve them. So we just did our water quality uh, monitoring with our YSI and we determined the thermocline. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what it is exactly right now because I'm sure you'll be finding out in class. <laughs> but um, Matt's gonna send this down and we're gonna do a vertical tow off the side of the boat. Um, there are increments on this line right in front of Matt. We have red marks and blue marks, red are feet and blue are half meters. Um, this is used for different sampling methods. Um, today we're gonna do ours in feet. So Matt's gonna lower it down to where our thermocline was and do a vertical tow up. Make sure everything's closed up gonna send it down and then uh, pull it up and show you how to preserve and uh, keep our plank down. So just gonna send that all down. It's a little windy so sometimes it goes underneath the boat. But. Just gonna go right to the water's edge with that. And then he's gonna pull it up perfectly. So and uh, now he's just gonna bring the, all the strings right in the boat. All right, so you're gonna let the water run out of that. And right in this bottom, as you guys can see, there's water that's trapped right in that plankton cup. A ton of plankton are probably in there. Phytoplankton, zooplankton, all the plankton you could ever want. So for our next part, we're gonna put the plankton that we sampled right into this little jar right here. And we have rose bangle ethanol right here used as a biological stain to stain our plankton. So it'll stain any biological material. So I'm gonna hold this right here for Matt. It's gonna open up the clip. Might need to open the clip a little bit more. Yep, there we go. Right into the jar. He's gonna close that clip up and we're gonna, then gonna wash it out with some rose bangle ethanol. So he's gonna take the pink plankton cup off of the plankton net, screws off right on that little gray piece right there. Now 
He'll wash out the insides right with the um, rose bengal ethanol. And then we'll open up that spout again. Actually, it still might be open. So goes right in there, dyes our plankton, and uh, just throw a little extra ethanol in there, rose bengal to keep it stained and preserved. And then we'll come back to the lab and look through this. Alrighty folks, so now we are actually at a different spot <laughs> on the lake. We're actually right at shore. We were just right out there a few minutes ago. Um, came right into shore here to use our ponar grab, which is used to survey our substrate and um, to look at macroinvertebrates. Um, so there is a big hole right here. It's a big jaw, I guess. Um, 144th of a meter square right here. Um, ponar grab has a... Uh, pin right into it and Matt's going to pull it out right now. We also have a spring pin. So what's going to happen is we're going to put this spring pin right in the top of the ponar grab, barely through to the other side, right there. And Matt's going to pull up on this rope and that's going to put tension. So Matt's just going to show you guys how this will kind of work out. So Matt's going to let tension go on that rope and that thing will pop out usually in the water and he'll pull up on the substrate and it's going to take a nice grab of that substrate obviously when we're in the water um, that'll be all closed Matt will grab the sides of here and we'll actually throw it into this uh, bucket sieve right here so Matt will open it up all the stuff will fall in and we'll take this bucket sieve that has a screen on the bottom and tap it in the water make sure all the inverts and the mud and everything else gets sifted through or stays in there whatever we're kind of looking for um, and then we'll put our collections in a jar and then bring them back to campus for you guys to go through. So we're going to do a few of these. We're going to do a shore, a 0.5 meter, a 1 meter, a 1.5 meter, a 2, and a 3. So we'll have, I think, about six samples for everyone to go through. Um, the way you tell is that um, you use the markings on the ponar grab line. Um, these are also half meters. Um, we also use a depth finder to help us out a little bit more so we're not running all over the place. So Matt will show you how to do that here in a minute. So now I know he's far away. We'll show you at a better angle here, but I just wanted to show you this is what he's doing on shore. He put the proper pin in. He's going to drop it right down. And that spring shall go once he drops it down. There we go. Got our nice grab of freaking substrate. Going to bring that back and we'll, we'll sift through it. All right, so here we are cheating again. Um, we already looked at the depth sounder. This is our 0.5. Matt's gonna lower this down, let it hit the bottom, yank it up a little and get a nice grab right there. We're gonna get our sieve, our bucket sieve, and I'm gonna work with Matt here to open that up right over the bucket. Oh yeah. That's so it. that is a good, that is a good sieve. So what you're gonna do is either grab it by the side. I'm gonna look in here, sorry for my poor hand camera handling and we're just gonna hit it on the top of the water like that you can go all the way down wash everything out looks like we have a ton of zebra mussels in here maybe some plants so what I'm gonna do here gonna grab this really quick and just so slide it on top of the water so it all goes to one side mm -hmm. <laughs> right on the top easier for a partner to scoop in And we're back this time with the plant rake. Um, fun fact, these are just two garden rakes welded together, um, grabs on both sides. Um, so you toss this out kind of as far as you can with a rope here. Um, there are some different methods that you could use, the per tram method and, and some others, but we're kind of just looking to see uh, what's in this water body today. So I'm gonna toss this out probably as far as I can, which don't make fun of me, it's probably not gonna be that far. Um, so I'm gonna swing it a few times and then let the rope go. We're a little biased. We're kind of close to these lilies. I don't think I got one. Um, but fun fact, these are yellow water lilies over here. They have more of heart-shaped leaves with yellow flowers, unlike our white water lily that has more Pac-Man shaped leaves. So I'm gonna pull this up. Sometimes we get pulled right to the 
to the plant rake doesn't work as well. I'm gonna dunk it off. We have a lot of sediment coming up with this. And as you can see here, we have our plant rake full of plants. So this time around, uh, this all looks like stonewort to me. Uh, gritty kind of plant, takes over the bottom. It's all over this place right now. Um, just all right there. Looks like we have a trace amount of um, Eurasian water milfoil. Um, it's dead, so we can't really look at it too well right now, but um, that's an invasive plant, super invasive. Um, invades itself in water bodies all across New York as well as the US. Um, looks like we don't really have anything else in there. I'm just gonna pick through this really quick. See what else we got going on. Looks like it might just be some stonewort and Eurasian water milfoil. So we'll go to two meters next and see what we can find there. All right, so here we are for our two meter rake toss. Um, let's see if we get any different plants. So obviously plants grow in the littoral zone. Um, they have to have like adequate sunlight and all of that good stuff. So um, as we go further out, we're obviously gonna expect to probably see a little less plants, but I'm gonna throw this out right here. Make sure I'm not stepping anything because if you get that wrapped around your ankle, not a good time. My weak rake off. <laughs> Let it just glide on the bottom. So bring it up, wash it off. Don't want to bring a bunch of sediment into the boat. All right. Okay, looking here again. Looks like a ton of stonewort yet again. So uh, obviously stonewort seems to be the most prevalent plant. Thought I just saw some Eurasian water milfoil in here. Maybe not. Nope. That's about it. So we have uh, all stonewort here. Look at that. Sounds a little crunchy when you touch it. It's a little gritty. Sometimes it can have a skunky smell. <laughs> All right, so just gonna throw this all back into the water and we'll go to our three meter spot. And here we are for our three meter toss. So I'm gonna throw this out. Watch your rope. Make sure my feet's not on it because that would be a shame. Two, three. That was a beaut. Thank you. Best one yet. Let it sink all the way to the bottom and start pulling in. So hopefully we get something more than stonework. Looks like we have some milk oil out here, so. Who knows, there may not even be any plants out here. Oh, no, we got some. Full of zebra mussels and muck. Gently have to clean them off because then you lose all your plants so not a ton of plants back here again i'm thinking that the only thing we're gonna find in this is our stonework we do have some pieces of really decaying eurasian water milfoil again that invasive plant um let's see if we have anything else oh nope some more stonework bunch of little zebra mussels in here also very invasive yeah, so uh, third toss, it just looks like a bunch of stonework. Woo.